Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirkoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about my hidden gems for week 5 of the 2021 fantasy football season. Since the snap occurred on Thursday Night Football, we've seen many players disappear from our fantasy lineups, whether it was injuries to a Russell Wilson or other prospects. And though that's going to obviously impact us for weeks to come, we have to go ahead and we have to collect the 6 hidden gems, not only to kind of give ourselves more value this week in order to help us win our week 5 matchups, but for weeks ahead, we're going to be talking about six different prospects across the fantasy football universe from different teams, from different timelines, from different planets that I'm going to go and collect in order to give us a better chance of winning our contest for this week and many to come. We're going to be doing this with the help of Underdog Fantasy, a superhero in their own right, in order to help us complete the fantasy football gauntlet and bring back our stud rosters. Now, before we begin today's video and talk about the various fantasy prospects, I, of course, want to thank you guys for the incredible support. If you guys have not yet already, subscribe to the channel, click the like button. Of course, we're going to be making fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2021 fantasy football season. On top of that, if you guys haven't yet already, check out Underdog Fantasy. It's another way to play fantasy football, whether it's their weekly contest or their pickums fantasy football has never been more exciting than with underdog fantasy for those of you who are playing the marathon of a redraft league and just want to go ahead and play different contests throughout the week whether it is on a monday a thursday or sunday morning like the london game or perhaps the various pickums that you can go ahead and do which we're going to do at the end of today's video making a couple pickum slips and giving you guys my thought process and opinions and the statistics that justify the reasonings as to why i'm going after specific players Go ahead and check them out. Go down to the description of the video. The link is down there. And use promo code Andrew. If you go ahead and deposit $10 or more as of this current moment in time, you'll get $10 in bonus cash in order to be able to use for this upcoming weekend's contests and have fun the underdog way. All right. So let's go ahead and let's start talking about some hidden gems for week five of the 2021 fantasy football season. Looking back at last week, we saw great production out of Zach Moss, Antonio Brown, Corey Davis, and and Kenny Galladay. Unfortunately, J.J. Taylor has not become anything, but he's the time zone. We're going to give him a little bit of time to see what we could potentially get from him in the coming weeks. And also, Curtis Samuel, even with the Logan Thomas injury, wasn't able to find success. But in weeks to come, he certainly will. Nonetheless, four out of six, I'll take that number. And hopefully, we can get a very similar number. But understand, a lot of the picks that I make on today's video are going to be guys that are often not started in many leagues. Often, many of these guys are going to be started in less than 20% of leagues in comparison. So when I take shots in the dark, expect there's going to be a little bit of volatility in regards to them potentially producing in that given week. Let's go ahead and begin by talking about our six hidden gems. And first, by collecting the Power Stone. Instead of decimating Xandar, we are going over to Chicago in order to collect the Power Stone via Damian Williams, who will be filling in for David Montgomery for the next three to five weeks. Now, like we all know, the hardest choices require the strongest of wills. And the situation that we're currently seeing with this backfield is that they not only have a great matchup, but in my opinion, the running back is often going to be the main focal point of this offense going forward, considering the quarterback position for the Chicago Bears. We've seen Justin Fields struggle throughout the last couple weeks, and now that he's been named the official starter for the Chicago Bears for the rest of the season with Andy Dalton being healthy and not on the injury report, it leads me to believe that this team is going to be focusing heavily on running the ball in order to not only kind of set up a play action for this young quarterback to give him more advantages, but also keep the ball out of his hands so that this offensive line and the running game can get themselves going so the defense can stay off the field. It all starts with the running game, and I expect Damian Williams to be able to have a lot of production. I mean, coming off of a week in which he played majority of that second half, but then also left with a little bit of an injury, but obviously he'll be fine this week. He had himself eight carries for 55 yards, a rushing touchdown, Two total receptions on two targets, 15 receiving yards, all for 14 half PPR fantasy points. And to be honest, against the Detroit Lions, yes, that is an incredible matchup, but he gets the privilege of playing against the Las Vegas Raiders this week. The Las Vegas Raiders thus far this season from weeks one through four have been giving up on average 23.83 fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. I mean, that statistic alone should give you a little bit more confidence in the potential of a Damian Williams-esque running back. On top of that, in terms of the total touchdowns that they've given up to opposing running backs, six 
in the National Football League in the first four weeks of the season, whether that is four on the ground and two through the air, that gives us more confidence because we know Damian Williams is not only just a guy that is going to run the ball consistently, but he's also going to get a lot of utilization in the passing game, especially with a young quarterback that needs to dump off the ball when they're not really using the tight end position much with Jimmy Graham, you know, rarely playing. Cole Komet only getting one reception for six yards last week. I think this is going to be a you know heavily utilized position, which they're dumping it off to Damian Williams and getting him out in the flat and or on screen passes. I mean, if you go back to week one, even with Damian Montgomery in the lineup, against the Rams we saw Damian Williams get himself five targets four receptions 28 yards obviously got a little bit of a sprinkle last week but without David Montgomery in this lineup going forward there's going to be a lot more utilization of a Damian Williams-esque running back now the question remains what could we potentially see from Damian Williams going into this week and weeks ahead I have him as this week's power stone because I know Damian Williams is capable of stepping up and being a starter it wasn't long ago that he was the starting running back of that Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl winning team there's a reason why they were able to win the Super Bowl and had a lot to do with running the ball against that San Francisco 49ers defense. But in the last three seasons that he's played, whether it's been with the Chicago Bears or with the Kansas City Chiefs, whenever Damian Williams has been in a game and given 10 plus touches, he's averaged 14.64 fantasy points per game in a half PPR scoring format. That kind of productivity is unmatched in comparison to some of these other running backs. And there's a reason why. Going after Damian Williams was a very valuable thing to do this week, mainly because, of course, David Montgomery's absence, but you're going to get a lot of value out of a running back in a backfield that, of course, wants to heavily utilize that singular position. There's a reason why David Montgomery was the number 11 overall running back prior to his injury. It mainly has to do with the fact that the Chicago Bears want to run the ball, and they find a lot of success in doing so. I think Damian Williams is on the right track for success, and that is why he is our power stone. We move on to Trey Lance as our space stone. I think, you know, the sky is the limit or, you know, potentially the space is the limit for Trey Lance because despite the fact that he's only being started in 7% of Yahoo leagues playing against the Arizona Cardinals this weekend, yes, it's not the easiest matchup in the world. I'll admit that the Arizona Cardinals have only given up 16.55 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks thus far this season on average. Now, is that going to bother me? Not really, because when I look at Trey Lance, I don't think of him as just a pure quarterback he's not a pocket passer there's a reason why he went nine for 18 passing last week he's very inaccurate and we've even seen that in the preseason from this uh, this year I mean going back to that Kansas City game there's been a lot of inaccuracy and a lot of obviously adjustments that Trey Lance is going to have to make and obviously this team didn't want to go ahead and start him so early but Jimmy Garoppolo cannot stay healthy the question remains what are we going to potentially see out of a Trey Lance this upcoming week the promising statistic that I saw was that he was able to get the ball out of his hands and let his receivers do the work. Two touchdowns and majority of his total passing yards went in the direction of Samuel. And on top of it, was able to get 41 rushing yards, a lot of it on scrambles. Now, if in fact a mobile quarterback like this is going to be run down by a Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt, th- there's a very good chance he'll be able to el- you know, evade them and be able to find himself some yardage on the ground. And the statistic that I continue to find as I was researching for this upcoming game mainly has to do with the fact that the Arizona Cardinals cannot stop mobile quarterbacks and that's been an issue for them not only this season but in seasons past thus far this season on average they've given up 25 rushing yards per game to opposing quarterbacks but let's take into account who they've played against Matthew Stafford Kirk Cousins yes a little bit of Ryan Tannehill and then we saw a little bit from Trevor Lawrence but some of those quarterbacks are not natural running quarterbacks in fact none of them are natural running quarterbacks if anything they they only ever run the ball if it is a wide open lane for them to go through now When you go back to last season specifically, in terms of the rushing yardage that quarterbacks were able to rack up in games against the Arizona Cardinals, Teddy Bridgewater, 32 yards in a rushing touchdown. Russell Wilson, 84 yards. Tua, 35. Josh Allen, 38. Russell Wilson, again, 42 yards. Cam Newton, 46. Jalen Hurts, 63 in a touchdown. And John Wolford, of all quarterbacks, 56 rushing yards. There's been a huge total of rushing yards against this Arizona Cardinals defense. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. We have Trey Lance coming off of a performance in which he he put up 20.38 fantasy points in the second half of this game. I think there's a very good chance, regardless of whether or not George Kittle is there, that Trey Lance can be the future of this organization, of course, but also be a great fantasy prospect for for us this upcoming week. And that is why I suggest him as the space stone. We move on to the reality stone because the reality of the situation for Jamison Crowder is pretty advantageous. I mean, overall, when I look at the entire offense for the the New York Jets, and I think Zach Wilson, okay, Corey Davis is his number one. The running game 
hasn't really found much success. Hopefully they can do that against the Atlanta Falcons, but there's no guarantee there. You know, the, even the running backs don't get very many targets. The tight end position, you know, Tyler Croft is out, injured. Are they going to give Ryan Griffin more opportunities? Maybe, but he is not a, you know, prototype receiving tight end. Both the backfield and the tight end position are lacking in threats. And when I look at the wide receiver position and the kind of rotation of players that we've seen week in and week out, whether it is injuries that have plagued them and or just a lack of opportunity, we have consistently seen only one wide receiver kind of find success, which was Corey Davis. But when you go back to weeks one and two, we saw Braxton Berrios catch the ball, you know, a pretty fair amount of times with 18 total targets between those two weeks. And that's because he was sitting at the slot position for majority of those games. Now, when you look at a quarterback like Zach Wilson, inexperienced, but yes, needs to get the ball out of his hands very quickly because his offensive line hasn't given him much time. There's a reason why Jamison Crowder was able to garner nine total targets, seven receptions, 61 yards of receiving touchdown for 15.6 half PPR fantasy points. At this current moment in time, Jamison Crowder is only being started in 16% of fantasy leagues on Yahoo. And when I look at his contributions last week and the fact that Braxton Berrios completely disappeared, only had one target last week, I think there's a very good chance that the reality of the situation leans in the direction of Jamison Crowder in this London game as the New York Jets take on the Atlanta Falcons. On top of it, when I looked at what exactly Jamison Crowder was able to accomplish in terms of the amount of routes that he ran and the amount of targets he was able to gather, he was targeted on 32% of the routes that he ran you know, last week. And when I look at the history of Jamison Crowder, I am a huge Jamison Crowder fan. I'll tell you guys, first and foremost, every year I've always talked about him being a great overall wide receiver and you know a friendly quarterback wide receiver and especially in a full PPR scoring format when i look at the statistics that he has produced since 2019 in the games that he has had six or more total targets he's averaged 14.56 fantasy points per game in just a half PPR scoring format let that kind of sink in Jamison Crowder is a fantastic wide receiver. There's a reason why he's averaged double-digit fantasy points over the last couple years of his career, regardless of who is at quarterback. Even with Zach Wilson back there, I think Zach Wilson's improving every week. We saw that last week against the Tennessee Titans defense, but playing against the you know Atlanta Falcons, it's quite a good matchup itself. The Atlanta Falcons have given up seven receiving touchdowns to opposing wide receivers thus far this season. That's among the most in the National Football League as it currently stands. I think Jamison Crowder is in a good spot. We move on to the Cleveland Browns. I think the Cleveland Browns defense is in a very interesting spot as well. You may be thinking, why are we talking about the Cleveland Browns defense? Because we're talking about time. Dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. And when I'm thinking about the Cleveland Browns defense, I am particularly thinking about what could we potentially see from them in the coming weeks. I'm not predicting go pick them up and play them against the Los Angeles Chargers this week. Though they could potentially find success because in the last two weeks, they've only allowed six and seven total points, have gone 11 sacks, forced one interception and 24 total fantasy points in the last two weeks. Those are great stats, but I'm looking towards the future of the Cleveland Browns and their defense. From weeks 7 through 11, the Cleveland Browns play against the Denver Broncos, Pittsburgh Steelers, Cincinnati Bengals, New England Patriots, and Detroit Lions. As they're currently only being rostered in 65% of leagues, I think this is a great opportunity to not only go pick up the Cleveland Browns defense if you are in need of a defense in those given weeks, but find a lot of success because they don't have a you know bye week until late in the season. Um, in fact, I think it's week 13 that they have a bye. You can go ahead, potentially pick up this defense and let them run free on a lot of these offenses that aren't able to block their front seven as, of course, guys like Miles Garrett over here uh, are producing very well. Ultimately, I think this is a good spot. I think the Cleveland Browns defense is one that you should be picking up, potentially stashing for weeks to come. We move on to Kadarius Toney in the Soul Stone. You know, Kadarius Toney is in a very good position, very similar to Kenny Galladay last week. Kenny Galladay was last week's Soul Stone. And, you know, once again, the New York Giants made a sacrifice. What did it cost? Everything. And ultimately, I mean, Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton will be missing their second consecutive games with their hamstring injuries, which, you know, could even land them more weeks on the out list. Now, if that's going to be the case, Kadarius Tony has himself another opportunity of putting up great numbers. I mean, he's coming off a week in which he had nine targets, six receptions, 78 yards, had one rushing attempt, and then he got himself one yard there. But at least he got, was given the opportunity for 10.9 half PPR fantasy points. Though this week, he's only being started in 4% of leagues, I throw out the possibility of even picking him up and throwing him on your bench you don't even have to start him because there is a lot of potential to be had from Kadarius Tony in weeks to come. But this week specifically, playing against the Dallas Cowboys, I think there's a lot of potential. On the 35 routes that he ran last week, he was targeted nine total times. That's 25.7% of the time he was targeted. 
That's a great number, especially in an offense that was throwing the ball as much as they did with you know Daniel Jones throwing for 400 yards last week. On top of that, when we look at this offense and how they've been able to produce against the Dallas Cowboys in the past, I'm not really too worried about what we've seen in the past. I'm looking at what this you know specific Dallas Cowboys defense presents to us today. As of the last couple weeks, the slot corner of the Dallas Cowboys hasn't been a great overall member of that defense. I'm not, you know, if I wouldn't be surprised if he gets cut in the coming days. It's a joke about Jalen Smith, but regardless, the whole point I'm trying to make is let's look at exactly what slot wide receivers have done to this Dallas Cowboys defense, the amount of damage they've imposed. Week one, Chris Godwin, nine catches, 105 yards and a touchdown. Week two, Keenan Allen, four catches and 108 yards. With with both these wide receivers having incredible games, they both played more than 65% of their snaps in those respective games from the slot position. And when we look at what Katerius Tony has done in the last two weeks, 60%. And in the week before, 85% of his snaps from the slot position. There is a lot of potential for a wide receiver like this in an offense that, of course, doesn't have premier targets. Yes, Kenny Galladay is going to get his. Saquon will get his. But outside of those two, we're, there's no guarantee for Evan Ingram to do anything. This could be a number three overall target in this offense, maybe even number two respectively, in this upcoming week in a matchup in which they probably won't be leading for the majority of this game and will be passing and giving Kadarius Tony a lot, of, a lot of opportunity. Let's not forget, Tony was a first-round pick this last year, and though that doesn't mean much, I think there's a lot of talent here, and if they go ahead and utilize him properly, he could find a lot of success at this week's Soul Stone. We move on to our final hidden gem for this week, and we talk about Hunter Renfro as the Mind Stone. Cursed with knowledge, I know Hunter Renfro is going to find a lot of success this week because from what we've seen thus far this season, and what the Chicago Bears have allowed to slot wide receivers. I mean, th there's kind of a theme today. We're going with the slot wide receiver position, whether it was Kadarius Toney or Jamison Crowder of the past. We look at Hunter Renfro, who is only currently being started in 17% of Yahoo leagues. And look at his production in the last four games. 10 points, 8.2 points, 16.2 points, 13.5 in a half PPR scoring format. In terms of targets, 9, 7, 8, and 6. Overall, those are great numbers. And when we look at what the Chicago Bears have allowed to opposing slot corners, Cooper Cup week one, seven catches, 108 yards and a touchdown. Tyler Boyd in week two, seven catches, 73 yards. And then just this last week against the Detroit Lions, when I was watching that game, if, if, if Jared Goff could have been a more accurate quarterback, I think Khalif Raymond scores three touchdowns in this game. But instead, in the slot position where he predominantly played this game, he was able to accumulate three receptions, 46 yards, and two receiving touchdowns. And even in the couple sprinkles that we saw Mon Ross St. Brown play in the slot position, he was able to find a lot of success against this uh, Chicago Bears defense. I think when we look at the past of the Chicago Bears, yes, in week three, they weren't able to get decimated by a slot a wide receiver, mainly because Jarvis Landry was out in that game. So I think Hunter Renfro is on the right track. He's, of course, playing extremely well and catching the eye of Derek Carr, their quarterback. I think this upcoming week, cursed with knowledge, I believe Hunter Renfro is an incredible overall fantasy prospect and our mind stone. Now that we've covered our six hidden gems with the help of Underdog Fantasy, we're going to travel to Underdog Fantasy throughout the universe in order to find a couple pick em slips that can help us lead to our overall success this upcoming weekend. Whether it is trailing or fading, be responsible, but let's go ahead and give you guys my perspective and opinion in regards to who I think is going to be balling out and capping some of these overs or who potentially is going to be under their overall productivity. Let's go ahead and check that out right now. Now that we've traveled here to underdogfantasy.com, I want to give you some more perspective on how to play the pick'ems games and how to make a pick'em slip. So for example, you could put up however many you know dollars you'd like, but depending on how many over-unders you get correct, it will potentially multiply your money by that amount. So let's say, for example, we want to put together a hidden gems team. Let's talk about Jamison Crowder, of course, producing well. Let's go down and let's talk about guys like perhaps Damian Williams and Hunter Renfro, both guys that I think have promising weeks this week. Let's take Hunter Renfro over four and a half receptions. We'll talk about Damian Williams over 84 total yards, whether it is rushing or receiving. If you go ahead, putting down $5, the payout would be 30, six times your overall money if all three of these players succeed on their overs. 84.5 total yards for Damian Williams, five receptions for Renfro, and 55 receiving yards from Jamison Crowder. We'll lock that in, and it's submitted. Done. That's how you basically do it. Now, let's talk about other players that I specifically like. I'm going top to bottom and talking about just about all the prospects that I particularly like going into this upcoming weekend's matchups. Now, similar to last week, I love Corey Davis. 
I think the number that he's currently sitting at, 60, uh, what, 61 total yards, I think that's a great overplay ultimately. If you're just trying to play a Sunday morning game, you can make a Sunday morning you know, potential slate in which you can very easily put it, you know, something like this, where you take Corey Davis and his over on receiving yards, Cordero Patterson, who obviously has surpassed, I mean, if we just go ahead and look at it, he surpassed 75 receiving and rushing yards combined in the last two weeks, which of course perhaps will be inflated this week because of the absence of a Corey Davis, or perhaps playing a Mike Davis this week in a matchup in which, of course, we've seen the New York Jets week in and week out give up a bunch of points and yards to opposing running backs thus far this season. We've seen multiple running backs run for over 100 on them and find a lot of success in doing so. So again, Mike Davis, who's typically being given like 10 to 12 carries per game, could end up finding himself, if he's going ahead and running the ball for four yards per carry, in the money. So that's not a bad lineup for a Sunday morning matchup. Now let's go ahead and let's look at some of these other guys particularly the offense here for the New England Patriots. I find a lot of uh, potential success by going over on the receiving yards or the reception category here. Just looking at the reception counts and the receiving yards in the last two weeks for Jacoby Myers, I think Jacoby Myers is an automatic play this week, regardless of whichever statistic you want to go ahead and go after. I personally think receptions is a harder number to potentially uh, find in comparison to yardage because it only takes one catch to go for 60 yards and a touchdown in comparison to getting that volume of opportunity, which he's certainly seen with, what, 26 total targets in the last two weeks. That being said, I think the receiving yards category is great for him. And I'm going to leave that there as I continue through today's video. But I also think other receivers like Nelson Aguilar in the last couple weeks, you know, th 38 and a half, getting 39 receiving yards isn't impossible because four out of the five starting linemen for this New England Patriots offense are going to be out. They're going to be forced to pass the ball. Not a bad option for some of these receiving options for the New England Patriots. Just putting it out there. Another guy that I think is an automatic play this week. And again, be responsible. Though I am thinking these are going to be automatics. May not end up being the case. It's going to be Leonard Fournette going over 62 rushing yards. Thus far this season, the Miami Dolphins have been one of the worst, if not the worst team against opposing running backs. You know, in terms of yardage that they've given up, oh my God, it, it's just, it doesn't stop. They got rained on last week by, of course, Jonathan Taylor going for over 100 rushing yards the week prior. Peyton Barber over 100 rushing yards. A lot of teams have succeeded. I mean, week one, Damian Harris over 100 rushing yards against this defense. Leonard Fournette should find automatic success here with a pretty good total. Now, in terms of the other receiving targets in this game, I really do like Mike Kosicki over 40 and a half. But for this specific circumstance, when we put, you know kind of build this team, I'm going to go for the guys that I'm most confident in. So we're going to keep moving. Uh, I think Jalen Hurts, in terms of total yardage counts, those are great numbers. I think Sam Donald for over uh, 260, what is it, 269.5 passing yards, I think that is a very good possibility. But what I will tell you, when I look at a lot of these receiving options, I am not very keen on any longer playing receivers that need to produce more than, you know, 90 receiving yards, whether it is, you know, a Tyree Kill or, you know, a DJ Moore, a Travis Kelsey. I think it's very, very sketchy to go ahead and, and try to buy in on something like that. But a wide receiver that may be, you know, kind of given a little bit of slack because he's missed the last couple of weeks with an injury and perhaps we could take advantage of it, in my opinion, is going to be A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown he only needs 68 total receiving yards, which in my opinion can be easily done with three receptions. I mean, his average depth of target is you know pretty high amongst all wide receivers. He is a deep threat and consistently finds a lot of production, especially when he plays against the Jacksonville Jaguars, which isn't one of the best overall secondaries in the National Football League. could absolutely be taken advantage of. I think A.J. Brown is in a very advantageous spot this upcoming week. Along with some of these other players, I think there's a very good chance that Ryan Tannehill can surpass you know, 19 and a half total completions and 243 passing yards. But it's just a matter of whether or not this game is an exciting one or it's Derrick Henry running the ball for majority of the game. Now, speaking of Derrick Henry, look at his rushing totals as of late. 182, 113, 157. Do we think Derrick Henry can surpass 116 yards? Yes, I, I do think so. But it is, re I mean, this is a coin toss at, at this point, right? Yes, there's one of two options over or under. But I think he could get up to like 115 yards and just stop. And that's what I'm worried about. But nonetheless, I think James Robinson with rushing and receiving is another one of these good options, along with LaVisca Schnault in his total yardage. I look at the Pittsburgh Steelers game without Deontay Johnson here. I have very interest, very little interest in like kind of uh, getting in on this. In terms of the Vikings game, 
The Detroit Lions are one of the worst secondaries in the National Football League based on grades by Pro Football Focus. And on top of it, in terms of production that they've allowed to opposing wide receivers, it is very possible that Adam Thielen can surpass you know, that six reception range, but that's the max amount of receptions he has had this season. I could very easily see Adam Thielen end the game with four catches for 40 yards and two touchdowns and just, you know, finish it in that kind of a manner in comparison to, of course, you know, balling out. Uh, Dalvin Cook may not even play this week. I don't know exactly uh, how that's going to work. If you take the under, it, it, you might be able to just cash in there really quickly. Um, in terms of some of this other production, again, I'm not going to go for any receivers over the 90 yards. I'm looking for guys that are relatively kind of sleepers and being undervalued in their overall production. We talked about it earlier. Renfro is not a bad option. Josh Jacobs over 55 rushing yards is a very good possibility. But let's look at some of these other guys. In all honesty, when I look at Baker Mayfield's total, you know, he's dealing with an injury. I could potentially even go under on this passing yardage total. The rushing yards, you know, that that's another one of these coin tosses. But Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, over those yardage counts, I don't mind it in any sort of capacity. I like the idea of Mike Williams and Keenan Allen surpassing and maybe even Jerry. Jared Cook surpassing their receiving totals. It's kind of hard to see Austin Eckler total 95 yards, but I mean, if he's able to do 30 on the ground, 60 through the air, can very easily do that. And it's always a possibility of him doing so. Zeke has been crushing his totals in the last couple of weeks. That's something that we could potentially buy in on. But let's go ahead and roll down here. Just want to, I want to check out some of these lower matchups. Something like, you know, perhaps the Monday night game. Is there anything here that I'm interested in? Marquise Brown, 56 and a half yards. All he has to do is surpass 57 yards. I mean, literally needs to just catch one ball. I'll take the over there. All right. So now that we've kind of looked this over, Patrick Mahomes, 16 and a half rushing yards. You know, this is a possibility, but I like the passing yards far more considering it's probably going to be a shootout. As long as the weather is, you know, contained, I think that's a very good number to potentially go after as well. Uh, but ultimately, let's go ahead. Let's scroll back to the top. I like this specific pick em slip that I've put together here. It's 10 times my money. Throw in five bucks. Flip it into 50. I think all these guys could very, very easily go over their totals because they're not asking for much. 62 and a half yards is very containable for Jacoby Myers considering he has done it twice already in the last two weeks with 26 total targets, getting a lot of receptions. Leonard Fournette's coming off of a week in which he had 91 rushing yards and then two weeks back against the Atlanta Falcons, 52. I think it's very, very easy for him to go ahead against the Miami Dolphins of all defenses who have given up three 100-yard rushers this season. I mean, even in week two, we saw... Devin Singletary dominated against that defense. Sure, he didn't go for, you know, over 100 yards, but I think he had like 70 on, you know, a handful of carries at a touchdown. Leonard Fournette automatically there. Uh, I think A.J. Brown has been slept on for to far too long, and uh, at this moment, he's kind of being disrespected in the fact that they're only projecting him for 68 yards. I think he'll certainly go over that, and Marquise Brown has been balling out week in and week out. If he catches one of those, you know, 50-yard bombs in the Detroit Lion game, he is a top six Top five overall half PPR wide receiver in fantasy right now. I'll take this. I'll go ahead and submit this. And that's pretty much it. Now, in terms of other players that you can go after, it's just up to you. What do you feel like is going to be the overs? What are players that you potentially want to go ahead and just believe in this upcoming weekend? What games are you going to be watching? That's the entire impetus and the entire reason as to why I play this and why it's extremely fun because it gives more value to games even though I may not be having anybody in this contest. But if it's a local game that's being played on my television, why not go ahead, watch it, and potentially get a little bit of excitement out of it than more than usual in comparison to, of course, fantasy where you know, you're struggling on a weekly basis trying to put together a lineup and then after you put it in, you know, after the first five minutes of the game, you're already projected to lose by 20. Why not give yourself another opportunity to have fun this weekend via fantasy? That's on Underdog. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you guys spending your time here today. Those are our hidden gems. Let's go ahead and review them one last time. Once again, to review, these are our six hidden gems for week five of the 2021 fantasy football season. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'll be live streaming kickoff with Kirikov, helping you guys set your lineups. So if you have any questions, be sure to drop by. Fantasy Gauntlet's been complete. The pick'em slips have been complete. And until next time, guys, I'll see you. Peace.